Boy, have we seen some fire from the kids in Parkland, Florida. And it's spreading. It's spreading to other schools. I watch Emma Gonzalez with deep admiration and um, the other drama kids who, who seem to be making really good TV right now. And I think maybe this time, maybe this time, Fire is at the center of our faith. The lit chalice is the symbol of our faith. I love to watch the flame as it rises up and falls back and glows and dances and it seems almost alive. We light the chalice at the beginning of every service and sometimes we light the chalice at our meetings too, just to remind ourselves that our work is sacred. And when the weather is gloomy or just odd as it is today, um, we, we look at the flames against the dark sky and they're so beautiful. According to some definitions, fire is alive. It breathes, it breathes air, it eats almost everything. It eliminates waste, yeah, ash, depending on, I mean, what it's eaten, I, it's mostly just ash. And it can grow and it can die. And this living flame is at the heart of Unitarian Universalism and we see the divine in people as a spark and we honor that divine spark in one another. And we talk about the light of truth the warmth of community and the fire of commitment as we extinguish our chalice. And if I were a um, younger minister, if, if I weren't um, experienced as I am, I might I might cheer for the spark in everybody and say, we need our fire to grow. We need to have our fire and just let it burn and let it burn on our bones and burn at both ends. And, you know, I, um, I want to talk about how fire is wonderful in some proportions, like it can warm us in our fireplaces and it can make an ambiance of a romantic dinner on our candles and it can start engines and it cooks food and it lights the night. But in other circumstances, it can burn your house down. And one of the reasons that we as um, spiritual people struggle to be uh, wiser and clearer and those of us um, who identify as quite struggle to keep remembering the systems that, that are set up to support people with light skin and to disadvantage people with darker skin and so that we can maybe be aware of the privileges that we can use in this, um, in this culture and in our world. We strive so that our fire can be used in the correct way, in, in the right proportion, because um, the, the light of truth is wonderful. And yet, uh, how many of us have been seared by a truth that was spoken without love? If the light of truth is just flashed out there, it can do a lot of harm and I know that many of us struggle with how to tell our truth and, and when and when would be the loving time and when would be the loving way and in what context is it most loving to tell the truth and what truths um, need always to go unspoken. So truth 
with love and respect. In our, in our Healthy Relations Covenant in this congregation, we, we say we want to speak to one another with respect and kindness and even disagree with respect and curiosity. And the warmth of community is wonderful. It's healing and it's magic. And yet, some of us have been in communities that were, I don't want to say too warm, but maybe a little too warm, maybe a little greenhousey, maybe a little suffocating. We've been in communities where people get nervous if you have a different thought or even if you like different music from the rest of the community. Um, people make weird, absurd rules about what you can like. If you're in the folk community, you can't be a rocker. And, and if you're in the women's community, you can't like men's music. And if, you know, what? I mean, uh, some families are a little bit hothouse in their community nests. They don't want to, you know, you don't want to examine truths about the family. Some churches are like that. Some institutions, some workplaces are like that. We don't want to hear any criticism about the way we do things here. We do things our way. And it's the right way, by the way. The community stays at the right level of warmth when current members welcome in visitors and new members and members who leave are breathed out with grace and uh, new ideas are welcomed and considered with equanimity and wisdom and not alarm. Now, community needs to be willing to be uncomfortable. And a community gets rigid and starts to suffocate when certain ideas will not be let go of and when certain levels of discomfort will not be tolerated. And those communities can die. We have to be willing to, at some times, comfort one another and at some times be uncomfortable together. And um, the fire of commitment, let me just speak about that for a second. The fire of commitment is fabulous. It helps us get things done. And it keeps us burning for our goals and our dreams. And yet, sometimes we get so committed to the goal that we just bull through right to it. And we don't take care of the people who are in our way or the people who are wrong. And um, we've all been in groups where uh, some of the people, never us, of course, <laughs> have gotten a little um, too committed and they burn out or they burn too brightly and start taking over everything or they burn in such a way that they ignore the tenderness of the people around them. And I have told you before that one of the meanest meetings I ever went to was a peace activist meeting. <laughs> Y'all been to meetings like that too. And sometimes the spark inside us just dies down. Sometimes it goes out. And what do we do then? We can't really find our passion. We can't really figure out what exactly interests us or what matters or we need to find someone or something that can reignite us. What reignites? You never know what's going to do it. Maybe a, a poem or a song on the radio or a book that you read or a piece of music. Maybe what reignites us is a gift from someone or a word from someone, or maybe what reignites us is uh, wonderful um, experiences or uh, 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 hiking or cooking or um, taking food to someone or having a party or going to a party. I don't know what ignites 
you, and I never know when my spark gets dim what's going to reignite me. One time it was a squirrel. <laughs> I was dragging. I was in college, I think it was my junior year, and I think I've told you this story. I was just dragging across the campus, and I saw this little squirrel scampering along the wall, and it twitched its tail like this, like it was just having a great time, or trying to balance and not fall off the wall. I don't know. <laughs> but it made me laugh, and suddenly I was uh, back to myself again. So t sometimes you need art or music or um, antidepressants. <laughs> and sometimes our light gets fed by feeding the light of other people. And feeding the light of other people, really, it's not hard. It's so um, little, the things that can help us so much. A, a thank you note or just a note to say I'm thinking about you or a note to one of your teachers from 10 years ago where you say, you know, I don't, I don't know if you remember me, but I got so much out of your class or um, a note to a, a new friend or a phone call or an email or Instagram. I'm learning Instagram. I love Instagram because it's so fleeting and you just invite people into your life just for a moment and then it's gone. It's, it's very spiritual in some way, which I will figure out. I, during the six months where I was broken, um, I realized how much small things meant a card or an email, somebody bringing coffee or getting you water when you couldn't get it for yourself. Um, a nurse coming in and fluffing your pillow, saying, are you comfortable? Can I do anything for you? It's just almost like a flood of gratitude comes out of you and you go, yes, this pillow is not comfortable. <laughs> because your world is so small that an uncomfortable pillow can just make you miserable. It's crazy how little things grow big and how big things grow little. Another way to feed the spark of, an, of a person or a group or an institution is by writing a check, making a donation. I, I know it sounds, uh, does it sound mundane? Not to me, but I don't know. I think money can serve as a shot of energy for someone. Money, writing a check to someone or to a, a congregation or to an organization, it says, I believe in you. Writing a check is like green fire. Giving money is like green fire that just says, let's make this happen. Let's do this together. I think it's powerful. And most of us are check writers or donators in big ways and little ways. And if it's generous within our means, that's what's important. So find your soul light and let it shine. And I'm going to end by reading the Clarissa Pinkola Estes reading again. She is such a wise woman. Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world all at once, but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. One of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in a stormy world is to stand up and show your soul. Soul on deck shines like gold in dark times. The light of the soul throws sparks, can send up flares. It builds signal fires. <laughs>